Thank you for being willing to click on this link and learn more about this study. I'd like to welcome you and again, thank you for coming. So I'm going to give you a quick introduction of myself as the researcher, a brief overview of the background for the study and why this study is important, a review of your options for participation, an overview of the time commitment involved in being a participant, answer any questions and answers you may have via email since this is not a live session, and then I have also included a link to a survey in this email message so that you can take the survey after watching this. Again, this is just to fully inform you. Uh, so this is my family. I am also very busy, just like I'm sure all of you are, and I will do my best to make the very most of the time that you have and to not certainly waste any of your precious time. I am currently a doctoral candidate at Bowling Green State University in the Leadership Studies program. I'm also a graduate of Ashland and Kent State University. I am certified in early childhood and spend the majority of my time as a kindergarten teacher. And in the past, I've been an adjunct lecturer. This is my 18th year of teaching. I currently teach at Crim Elementary for Bowling Green City Schools. So what exactly is joy in teaching and learning? Really, joy has to do with you feeling seen, with your students feeling seen, um, with being seen, heard. Um, it might often include experiences of excitement and wonder and curiosity. It's not necessarily a lot of laugh out loud and smiles. They may be part of joy, but it's really a happiness that goes beyond that regular happiness. Um, and often joy does lead to meaningful engagement in teaching and learning. So this will be a qualitative study, and I am exploring the perceived impact of Finnish educational principles. So these are strategies that people in Finland prioritize in teaching and learning. And I'm going to be looking at implementing those strategies in Ohio schools and analyzing it from a leadership perspective. Um, specifically, I'm looking to discover if there, if any, uh, driving and restraining forces when attempting to incorporate Finnish principles that have been designed to promote joyful teaching and learning. And likely you've probably heard of many of these principles before. So the background, um, there's joy of learning is really experienced um, through opportunities that may include creativity, a lot of autonomy and often play. Um, play does provide that possibility for joy of learning. Um, typically joyful environments include freedom with choices and autonomy. Joy is often shared by students and teachers, or if you're looking at it from a leadership perspective, leaders and teachers and students, it is a common joy. Um, joy often includes working persistently, even when there are difficulties in order to achieve success. And just thinking about the notion of happy schools, what happy schools look like, and what you might often see when entering a classroom or entering the halls. Um, in this study, there will be a joy menu, which will include specific principles for joyful teaching and learning. And then I have created the framework of the study by considering policy and legislation and those implications, how standardization, accountability, and competition may impact how we implement joy in our classrooms and in our schools, thinking about the stress and the anxiety in teachers and leaders and students today and how there has been significant increases in leader and teacher turnover. And then just thinking about what this could do to impact academic performance and other outcomes of um, well-being. So really what I think about as the catalyst for this study is that when a flower doesn't bloom, you fix the environment in which it grows, not the flower. So thinking about how we can support our students, our teachers, and our leaders in our classrooms, in our schools, and really um, enhance the environment in which they're learning. Um, this research really comes from Canada, uh, Finland, and Singapore, and looking at how these countries' practices compare to the United States, and thinking about how performance has been on tests such as the Program for International Student Assessment, looking at how these countries that adopt some of these approaches and principles are really ahead of the United States and thinking about how we can take some of the learning from these countries and apply it in research. Thinking about the World Happiness Report and how um, individuals in Finland reported the highest levels of happiness of any other country, which is why Finland was selected. One of uh, the huge indicators in that was the freedom to make life choices and thinking about how often we offer that autonomy to promote joy. 
So I will be applying Kurt Lewin's force field analysis model, and I will be looking at driving forces and restraining forces when attempting to implement these finished principles for joyful leading, teaching, and learning. To do this, I am looking at eight different typologies in the state of Ohio. Every school has been issued a typology, um, and these can be found on the Ohio Department of Education. In general, a very, very large district with high population, high student poverty, and often um, diversity would be considered a typology eight. And then if you had a school that maybe had high student poverty, but it had a very small student population, it would be typology one and then everything in between. I am using purposeful sampling, which is the reason I am asking you to click on the link of the survey that I have included in this email, because I am looking for maximum variation in participants. I am hopeful that I would be able to select a teacher and a leader from each of the typologies in Ohio. Um, so again, the ideal sample size would be eight leaders and eight teachers representing all of the Ohio school district typologies. Some of the implications for this study would be to develop a functional grounded theory from the analysis and also identify any of the driving and restraining forces that come up throughout the study and thinking about how this um, could be used, what potential policy implications there would be for leaders. And finally, to create a joy model. And my hope is that that joy model may be used to replicate the study or to incorporate Finnish principles into classrooms. You have three options for participation. You can participate in the focus group as either a leader or a teacher, and you may also represent both. For example, if you are a teacher who is also on the building leadership team, you might say that I'm both a teacher and a leader, and you could represent both. If you choose to participate in the study, I will ask you to identify if you are participating as a leader or if you would like to participate as a teacher. Um, and the survey, again, will give you an opportunity to share that preference. So if you are thinking, what do I have to do? First, you attend this informational meeting and you are doing that um, by clicking on this link right now. After you are finished with this meeting, if you still have interest, which I hope you do, then you could click on the link for the Qualtrics survey to express that interest and what you would be interested in doing. I'm able to find out some demographic information. And then you will be selected to either participate in the focus group or the study. Again, I'm looking to obtain maximum variation. Based on your selection, you will do one of two things. If you choose the focus group, you will participate in a focus group for 60 to 90 minutes, and then your time with me is over. But if you are excited enough to participate in this study, you will have a review of the joy menu. This review will take an hour or less and can be done. Um, a lot of this information is from the book Teach Like Finland by Timothy D. Walker. You will, from this book, I have created a joy menu for you. And you will look at this menu and you have complete freedom to choose how and what you will implement for a period of three weeks into either your classroom or your school. Some of these ingredients of happiness on the joy menu might be giving your students more freedom, scheduling brain breaks, learning on the move, finding out ways to incorporate fresh air in staff meetings, knowing a child better. Um, any of these really, how you see it is what I want you to do. This is really about autonomy and freedom for you to find ways to incorporate joy and these principles into your practice. Then you will be given three Qualtrics journal entries, approximately one per week of implementation. They take a 10 minutes maximum each, and you will go through and answer the questions. There will be two semi-structured interviews, one following when you learn about the JOY menu prior to implementation, and one at the end of your three-week implementation. These will be 30 minutes or less with me, and they will be individual interviews. Finally, at the end of your participation in the study, I will send a Qualtrics survey, one final survey, which will be 10 minutes or less, and that's really just for member checking, which means you will verify what my findings are. You will say, yes, that's what I reported, or I'm concerned about this. You will have an opportunity to say that there is validity in my findings. I cannot thank you enough for clicking on this link and expressing your interest. So you have now officially attended the informational meeting, and you have the opportunity to click on that Qualtrics link and take the survey. Again, thank you so much for your time, and I hope I get to work with you soon.